is my rock. He's my fortress, He's my deliverer. And him alone do I trust. So we praise his name. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. And we bless him today. Glory to God. Glory to God. Sometimes I wonder what we've come to worship for. I could have stayed home and kept quiet. Look at somebody and say, I come to make a joyful noise. Tell them, you don't know the kind of week that I had to come through. Come on, tell them, you don't know the kind of week I had to come through. So I come to give him a joyful noise. All ye lands, serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. He that hath made us, not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pastor. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Enter his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good. For the Lord is good. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting. And his truth endureth to all generations. Come on, let's take a praise break right there. When I think of the goodness of what he's done for me. St. Luke 15. Very familiar scripture. Some of you may have thought I was jesting when I was responding to Darius in the back. But I think if we be honest, we need to look at reshaping worship services every now and then. Amen. 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 See, I'm sorry, not today. <laughs> so, but very, really, in, in, in all seriousness, uh, love, to, love to see how the youth, see the angels, see how the, how, how the youth want to do, want to do worship. Amen. Amen. Got, got, these, got these presiders and, and, um, now, if you notice, they, they, they just follow what we normally do. But I, I like to find out what, if they made up the order of worship, what it would be like. I asked this question, and I'm not going to take a lot of time, because I got, I got about a 12-minute sermon today, because I, I, I got youth and older folk, too. But I was on my way home from Greensboro with Elder Richard Wilson and my father. And um, I was sitting, I was, I was driving, I think, and I, I, I said, Dad, Elder Wilson, where, where did the order of worship come from? Ask that question. Where did it come from? Because I've asked it before and nobody the answer, but where, where did it come from? You know, be, before we made it sanctified and you can't deviate from it. You've got to have the scripture and the deacon got to pray. And, the, and, I, and there was no answer. So I decided to check it out myself. Found out that it was an old farm, farming um, thing where that the farmers would, would tend to the land early in the morning and at, at about 10 o'clock they would break and then, and then have worship at 11. That's where it came from. The farmers worked their fields part of the day and then worship at 11 o'clock. If you go over to the Caribbean, they worship earlier in the morning because of the sun. They worship about 9 a.m., 9.30. Some of y'all would miss worship every Sunday then, but, but uh, 9 a.m., and, and, and they worship, and, and, and then close to 12, maybe something of 11, they're done with this because the sun is so hot, but they come back in like a 6 o'clock service. That, that ain't working that much in this day anymore. 
But my point is that we don't need to get stuck on this is how we do it. And that's the only way that we can, we can do it. Amen. 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 I'm, I'm already working on changing the order of service, and I'll bring it up in our business session uh, at, at the end of the month. But just looking at moving some things around. Why do we do what we do? And if it, and if it doesn't glorify God, we need to stop doing it. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm messing up now. I'm messing up with, with my birthday gifts today. So let me. Let me get to preach. Luke 15. Luke, Luke, Luke 15. Familiar scripture. Just, just two verses, but we're going to deal with looking at verse 14 and verse 15. After he had spent everything, I'm reading from the NIV. After he had spent everything, there was a severe famine in that whole country. And he began to be in need. So he went and hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to his fields to feed the pigs. I'm going to stop reading that. You can read the rest for yourself. I want to talk to you before we pray. I want to talk to you from this thought. Stand your ground. Stand your ground, young folks, stand your ground. Let's pray. Father, we bless you now for blessing us, and we thank you for <clears throat> another day of worship. And Father, I pray for your touch, a fresh anointing, a touch for the frailty of this body. Allow your word to come forth with power, with conviction. Grant the anointing that makes preaching effective. Open the hearts and the minds of your young people to today. We ask these blessings now in Jesus' name. And for Christ's sake we pray. Amen. You may be seated in his presence. For the three young people today that take notes and put those notes in my box, for the three best, I'm giving out $10 gift cards to Chick-fil-A. For the young people, for the young people, for the young people, there'll be ten dollar gifts today for the three top notes from the message today. Y'all know I've done this before. I keep their attention as long as I can. Amen. Amen. Stand your ground. Look at somebody. Say, stand your ground. When I look at the Word of God, it's interesting because. We look at the word and sometimes we don't see ourselves uh, in the picture, in the scripture. And this particular uh, scripture that we are looking at today is one that, uh, that is oftentimes used when you're talking to young people. But I have learned over the years that this is not just a young person's spirit that happened to this particular uh, young man. Some years ago, some years ago, there, uh, there was a growing trend in the education field where that thousands, if not hundreds of, uh, hundreds of thousands of children were, were labeled ADD. And I, I, I shared this with a few of you, uh, even in Bible study years ago, some of you may not have known this, but uh, where this special education piece came from in the state of Pennsylvania was that years ago, our former governor, Governor Thornburg, uh, many did not know, but he had a special needs child. And his wife, Jenny, was one of the um, uh, instigators or initiators of, 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 of the special ed and that's when you started seeing it on the curriculum, even in colleges, and people were graduating with a degree in special education. If you didn't know it, it was actually started by Jenny Thornburg, uh, former governor's wife of the state of Pennsylvania. And so they were labeling the children. And the only problem with that is that, is that uh, it, it is hard to remove a label. 
Amen. It's hard to remove a label. And so, and so uh, this particular ADD had to do with the attention span of a child in a structured environment. And in other words, it was noticed that, that certain children had difficulty sitting and staying focused on their given assignments. Either they were easily distracted by others or just distracted from within. And, 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 and I think we need to understand uh, uh, there's a word that's floating around that, and that word is destiny. And destiny is that which has been predetermined, preordained, or fixed. Destiny is power which foreordains a course of events. Destiny has been fixed by a greater power than us. My concern uh, is this gener for this generation of youth and young adults who have gotten their early training in the house of God and in the things of God and are, and are growing up or have grown up and do not know God nor the things of God. My, my concern, and I, I've seen it over the years, the, the enemy of our soul has, has, has attacked, the, his attack has come at those that, that we have raised up in the church, that we have raised up in the word of God. It has been said that, 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 that once a woman, once a woman uh, 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 learns that she is pregnant, it is, it is imperative to adopt and maintain a proper, a proper uh, a regiment and, and the things that she puts in her body after finding that she is expecting a, a child, ingesting the proper amounts of protein and, and other vitamins is critical and crucial during that time. Keep in mind that while a woman is pregnant, she is not eating for herself alone. She's eating not just for her own nourishment, but she has to be concerned about the unborn child she is bearing. Uh, she has to be concerned with what she allows to enter her body that could affect the seed that was planted in her. There, there is something, there is something out here that, that I call destiny distractions. Destiny distract. Hear me good, you young people. There, there are, there, there, there are people, uh, there are persons who sometimes you can let into your life that don't understand your destiny. Amen. Uh, don't understand that the hand of God is on your life. Don't understand that, that the hand of God is directing you. And so therefore, you've got to be careful. Oh, bless his name. Years ago, I, and I, I wasn't going to bring it up because I might preach this, preach this one in, in, in a couple weeks. But years ago, I preached a message about being, being pregnant by the wrong person. Amen. And, 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 and it wasn't what you thought it was. It was just a matter of, of then how the Bible says, be not unequally yoked together. Uh, uh, the person that you decide to marry needs to have an understanding of your destiny with God. Or you'll marry somebody or even begin dating somebody or get engaged to somebody who does not understand the direction that's steering your life. I've heard too many say that, well, well, well I know he's not, uh, I know he's not walked with God, but, but I'm going to change him. No, no, no. If he's not changed before you marry him, don't expect much change after that. Y'all going to make me preach longer than, than, than what I intended to preach now. But, but I just want you to know that, 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 that uh, uh, this, this woman who's expecting, she, she's eating not just for her own nourishment, but she's eating for that unborn child that is in her womb. She has to be concerned with what she allows to enter her body. Young people, your body, you got to be concerned. And listen, stop calling everybody friend. Everybody is not your friend. <laughs> oh, bless his name. I'm going to say it again. Stop referring to everybody as your friend. Amen. I, I know the day has changed a, a, a lot, and 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 but, but there's still some still some old fashioned some old fashioned parents left around here where that uh, we need to know where you're going. Uh, uh, where you going now? Um, we we need to know where where you're going. 
When I was away last week, I was, I was teasing one of the bishops, and we got on the van to go for a tour in, in Charleston, South Carolina, and I took, my, I took my cell phone out and took a picture of, of the driver. And I want y'all to know this is the last person who was with me. <laughs> I'm out in the country of Charleston, South Carolina, and I said, this is the last. I took his picture. I said, turn uh, to the right. I got his picture this way. Straight on. I, got, I want y'all to know where I am and who I was with. Because I saw alligators where I was, and I, you know, I didn't know what was going on out there. But I, I took his picture, Deke. I want y'all to know, in case something happened to the bishop, you can trace me. But listen to me. Everybody, young folk, listen. Everybody is not your friend. Everybody does not understand your destiny, does not have, a, have an inkling of really where, where God is taking you. That's why you got to have a relationship with God first. And then from there, allow God to, to build you from there. So, so, so just for a short while, I want to I wanna take a look at the distractions to destiny. And now the word distracted means, means to worry. It means to twist. It means to be drawn here and there. It means to be diverted. It means to be sidetracked, troubled, and confused, and anxious. Distractions are designed to keep you from accepting the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Oh, bless his name. There are some spiritual actions that come in various forms. Every, every distraction is designed to keep you from your God-ordained assignment. I can't say it enough, but some folk come into your life at well-calculated times. Some, some, some mean you're no good. Some, some have no idea of, of your God-given assignment. And so, and so the Bible talks about the young man mentioned in the scripture in Luke 15. He represents how important destiny can be. There's no way that this young man had been thinking about what he was going to do before he did it. He surrounded himself with people who kept pushing him or distracting him or daring him. How many of us will be honest that, 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 that there was some time in our life where somebody dared us to do something? Amen. Didn't, how did that work out for you? Uh, that someone dared you to dared you to do something, and I'm I'm, I'm gonna tell you something very 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 crazy now. And, and and but but my cousin and I used to used to play around with the cigarette lighter in the car, and and did, wasn't sure whether it was real hot or not. And 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 of course, uh, uh, you go first. And and I got a I got a nice a nice well-rounded scar on the side of my knee, the shape of a cigarette lighter, because I went first. <laughs> of course, when I screamed and ran off crying, uh, he decided that me going first was enough. But how many times, young, young folk, have you been, have you been dared? Uh, how how many, many of, of your peers have, 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 have dared you to do certain things? Well, this, this particular young man in the story, he surrounded himself with, with, with people who kept pushing him. And for everything he was taught about his destiny, there was a voice around him that, that served as a distraction. Just, just, imagine for, just imagine for a moment the negative influence that his friends were and the constant harassment for him to leave his place of destiny. To leave the place where his seed was being nurtured. Glory to God. To, to, to move away from the place where that he was covered by the blood. Oh, hallelujah. There's a lot of us, and, and I can only speak for, for me, a lot of us walked away from the covering of the blood. But thank God for mercy. Thank God for mercy. A lot of us have walked away from the covering of the blood. And so just imagine for a moment the negative influence that his friends were and the constant harassment to leave the place where his seed was being nurtured. Can you imagine the distraction that this young man uh, was experiencing? Sometimes, sometimes we can become uh, distracted when we start looking for alternative answers 
or substitute solutions. Let me tell you again what, what a distraction is. It is worry to be drawn away here and there, diverted, sidetracked, confused and anxious. This young man's friends had no idea of the call that was on this man's on, on this boy's life. His friends said everything necessary to get him out of the house. The story says that the young man came to his father, the young boy came to his father and said, give me what it's going to be to have. In other words, I, I can't wait for you to die and let's read it in, in the will. Uh, let me get it now. And the father, and the father gave him his portion. And the Bible says that the young man went out and, and, and wasted his substance on out of control living. Amen. Wasted his stuff. Thought he had a handle on life. Oh, bless his name. And went out and wasted his substance on, on, on righteous living. And he then exhausted everything that he had. He had nothing left now. So he thought. And he decides now uh, to now take a job. And he looks and he goes to a, a man who's hiring, but the job was feeding pigs. And this was against his customs. And he, he took the job of feeding pigs for a while, but he looked, and what was bad was that what the pigs were eating looked good to him. And that's what would happen when sin starts to take over in our lives the things that we ought to stay away from begins looking good to you for a season so you find yourself in stuff that you should not be into and caught up in some things. Oh, bless his name. My heart grieves because of, because, because some, of the, some of the young people that are now grown adults that we raised up in this church uh, are, are out there for a season. And now the teaching of the word is not important to them anymore. So this young man now reaches a place now that is interesting here because uh, uh, where, where he finds himself, it is strategic what the enemy has done. And so he, he the Bible says, uh, and when he came to himself. Oh my goodness. That's probably one of the strongest scriptures in the word of God. And when he came to himself. In other words, that 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 upbringing surfaced. He had a mark on him. <laughs> oh my God. And that's what holds me together when I, when I pray for the, uh, for the young adults, the young adults now, and pray for those that were raised up in the church here and, and, and you don't see them. I, I pray for the fact that there's a mark on them. And you can't go but too far when you got a mark on you. Oh, bless his name. You, you, you can't go but so far when there's a mark on you and you don't know there's a marker, but you know there's something different. Has anybody, any adults in growing up realized there were certain things I just could not do? And the reason I couldn't do it was because I had a mark on me. Oh, bless his name. I told y'all this story before. Y'all know you're tired of hearing it. But I'm going to tell it again. When I, when I first went, went, went away to college, I said, Lord, free at last. Free at last. Thank God Almighty. Nettie and Frank are home. <laughs> went, to my, went, to my first, went to my first dance, my first dance at the Martin Luther King Center. Every black college had a Martin Luther King Center. Went there, and, and the music broke out. I started moving. Oh. And the girl I was trying to dance with said, you, you dance like you in church. <laughs> just, just, just killed my buzz. <laughs> but there was a mark. And can oh, but so far. And, and that's where I, I, I want to speak to the, to the young people. Just give me five more minutes. I want to speak to you today because there's a mark on you. And in this hour and in this day, of digital this and technology and so on and so forth and all those things are needed but don't forget your creator in the days of your youth don't forget that it's he that had made us 
and not we ourselves. Don't forget that we are his sheep and the sheep of his pastor. You have a mark on you. Oh, and since you have a mark on you, you've got to make your mark in this world. Some of you sitting around here right now are future preachers, and I know we say lawyers and doctors, but, but you're future preachers of the gospel of Jesus Christ because the enemy of your soul is out here killing and, and actually destroying as many as he can, but you got them on you. And the reason why the devil can't take your life is because the mark is on you. Oh, bless his name. There's some well put together, calculated distractions. When things do not move as fast as we would like, we can become tempted to look for other ways to satisfy our desires and our ambitions. Let me say this again. The enemy has visited the house of God and has put his hand on those that have been brought up in the house of God. Oh, bless his name. And I found out you can only do but so much. Oh, hallelujah. Anybody in here right now, any, any adult in here right now realize that, the, that you got a mark on you? <laughs> can't, can't, can't go but so far. God won't let you go but so far. I remember vividly when I when I gave my heart to the Lord, when I, when I really gave it to him. After graduation from college, we, we got married, and, 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 and I went to Harrisburg. And uh, we went to, the, went to the church, and Sister White didn't want to didn't go in at first because it was, it, was it was a storefront. The pigeons owned it. Owned it. The, there were pigeons inside and outside. You end up put your hand on the rail because you get a handful of pigeon uh, dung. <laughs> Pastor Chambers was preaching a message. Bishop, Bishop Bowens wasn't there at the time, but Pastor Chambers was preaching a message, and it, and it had to do with forgiveness. And the next thing I knew, I found myself at the altar, and Deacon Chambers started singing that old song, Take Me Back. That was the day that I committed my life Somewhere about October, yeah, after we got married, October 1975, gave my heart to him. Knew I had a mark on me, didn't, didn't, didn't know what the mark required. Let me say, parents of, of adult children or just, or just teenagers or whatever and grandparents, don't give up. Look at somebody say, stand your ground. Stand, it, 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 it may not look like much right now. may not look like that, they're, that, they're, uh, that they were paying attention, but I declare the effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous. Oh, glory to God. Because now this present day uh, 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 of, of the youth and of young adults, uh, they, they, they think totally different. Especially when it comes to the word, they, they, they skip over certain things in the word. And society is, is not helping because I, I, I shared this on last week, uh, that, 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 that we have colleges that are offering classes on how to cohabitate, how to live together. And you need to, take, you need to live together before you marry one another. And that's, that, that, that's what's being said now. That, that's the teach. Yet, yet the word talks about fornication. Uh, Y'all yo, yo got real quiet now. I, I'm, I'm, you, you must have a nephew or somebody or a cousin. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And, and you don't hear much of it said across the pulpit. Amen. But the fact of the matter is, uh, 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 God, God is still God. I, I think I read. Now, now I think I read. And I'm, 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 not a, I'm not a good reader, but I think I read. He's the same. Yesterday. I mean, today, yesterday, and forevermore. Amen. He, he's the same God. God has not changed his mind. Amen. 
Oh, bless his name. And 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 I and and the and the youth youth are are seeking some a way a way that I can keep doing what I do and still have God. But if you're really going to come to God, you must believe that He is, and that He is a reward of them that diligently seek Him. If you're really going to come to God, you you got to come back. Take me back to the place where I first received you. If you're really going to trust God, now listen, I, I understand that this modern day preaching where uh, where that it's 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 all based on. Uh, uh, all this new age kind of thinking. I understand that. And I might come across old fashioned, but I still believe that we got to follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. And if you're sitting under preacher who's not preaching that, you need to get out from out of there because the Bible says it. I didn't lost about half here now, but it's all right. I've been doing this 44 years now and the Bible is still the same. Still the same. I'm trying to save your soul. I'm trying to save your soul. I ain't worried about you speaking to me after church. I'm trying to save your soul. Come on over, have a piece of cake or whatever you got got over there. I'm trying to save your soul. Hallelujah. And somebody needs to tell you, we're trying to save your soul according to, to, to the word of God. There are certain things in the word that God said don't do. Bishop, they messed up now. But the word of the Lord is a strong tower. Righteous run in and are saved. No matter what tactic the enemy of your soul tries to use to delay or even deny you from reaching your destiny. Even if the way appears to be an easier way, stand your only way to stand your ground, listen to me, and I'm closing, is to develop a spirit of praise. Uh, <laughs> now, a spirit of praise is different from just being told to give God praise. Look at somebody and say, well, we need a spirit of praise. A spirit of praise shakes things. <laughs> a spirit of praise moves things. So when somebody gives us, they just give God a praise, and that's why we start clapping, clapping first. But, 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 but the clapping is a part of praise, but it's what comes out of your mouth. Oh, hallelujah. God, you've been my keeper. God, you've been my provider. God, you've been my source. I'm talking about praise, uh, a spirit of praise now. God, I didn't have much this week, but I'm so glad that every one of my needs have been met. God, I love you because you first loved me first. God, I thank you for Jesus. I thank you for a while a sinner, you sent him to die for me. God, I love your word. I love the fact that you're my shepherd and I shall not want. God, I, I, I love your name. I love to call you. I love to talk to you. I love to be in your presence. I love to walk with you. God, I just got something in me that needs more of you. That's a spirit of praise. a spirit of praise and let me tell you something else I don't want to get my young folk I don't want to get you get you stuck on uh, stuck on sound and stuck on the cameras I, I want you to get your heart so right with God oh bless his name because sometimes we think the only thing that young people can, can do is they can just sing and praise dance but there's there's more in them y'all not going to help me here today there, there, there's more in in this younger, there's more going on inside of them. And I believe with all my soul, as I, as I look around now, they may look like they're not listening right now, but I declare, one of them might be writing notes just to get that $10 chicken filet card. And it's all right, come on and get your chicken filet card. It's fine with me, as long as you got the word down in you. Because some of you sitting around here now, if not one of you is going to take my place one day, and I want you to stand behind the sacred desk and declare the gospel of Jesus Christ.
when we're being faced with the most difficult times of our lives, spirit of praise is a praise that is developed over seasons of trials. Oh, bless his name. Older saints, we've got to remind this generation of the goodness of the Lord. I'm not so worried about them coming in jeans with holes in the knees. I'm not. I'm not. So. I, that's 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 not a that's not a tremendous worry of mine. Matter of fact, the Bible says it just came to mind. The Bible said Jesus ran into a beggar, and uh, matter of fact, he was a blind beggar, so he ain't know what he had on. I'm sure, I'm sure he didn't have, comp he didn't have, he didn't, <laughs> he wasn't coordinated, I'm sure. He probably looked like somebody blind dressed that man. <laughs> but it's all right. Jesus, what do you want me to do for you? Blind Bartimaeus said that, that, that I might have my sight. And that's where we need to move with this next generation. Help them get their sight. Oh, bless them. We're, we're, we're in an all-out war for the souls of these children. All-out war for the souls of these children. But thank God Stand with me. I'm done. Stand with me. Thank God for the blood. Thank God for the blood. The spirit of praise. David was going, what David meant when he was going through the most difficult times of his life. David said, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continuously be in my mouth. My soul shall make a boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name it's together. Here's the end of the story. The young man said in himself, I can't eat this. This is not good for me. This is against my upbringing. How many hired hands does my father have? And I sit here in want. He said, I, I'm going to arise. I'm going to get up from where I am and go to my father. That young man must have had such confidence in his father's response because there was no hesitance. He didn't hesitate at all. He said, I'm, I'm going to get up from here and, and go to my father. I like this part. The father saw him from afar off. And began to prepare in advance. <laughs> Lincoln, let's, let's get ourselves ready. For the sons and the daughters. That word down in them, but it needs to come up out of them. That's sons and daughters. The Bible says, matter of fact, the sons and daughters will prophesy. Bible says the father saw him from afar off and put some things in place. Elder Jones, he put some stuff in place. He said, listen, um, get the fatty calf. Get a ring. I think he said, get a robe. Help me, Bible scholars. Get a robe. <laughs> now, he's doing all this while the son is on his way. Woo. <laughs> Not there yet. Cassie, they're not there yet, but on his way. You've got to see your son 
Better come get it, Stephen. I feel like preaching now. You've got to see your son and your daughter on their way. Hallelujah. Look at your neighbor and say, they're on their way. Come on, tell them again. They're on the way. No matter what they, what you see, they're on the way. Tell them, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. They're on the way. While he was on his way, they got the party going. They got the party started. He said, because my, my son, when the son got there, he, he said, just, just make me one of the hired hands. That's all. I don't, I don't even need my own room back. I don't, I don't, I don't need my own room. I don't, just, just make me one of the higher servants. That's all. You don't even have to pay me as much as you're paying them. Just, just make me one of the higher servants. Lincolnia, listen. Greater Faith Hope, listen. They're on the way. They're on the way. Mother, father of adult children, they're, they're on the way. Get your dance on. Get your praise back. They're on the way. And when they get there, let them, let them find forgiveness. Let them find mercy. Let them find the same grace. If you ever tell your whole story about the grace of God, I once was lost, but now I'm found. Blind, but now I see. Tell your story how you messed up and God, who's rich in mercy, brought you back home. Tell your story of how you got in some stuff had not been for the Lord who was on your side. Where would you be? Tell your story. Because they're on the way. Say yeah. Say yeah. Say yes. Ah, oh, yes. They're on the way. And nothing can stop them because they got the mark of the blood on them. I'm wondering right now, right now, right now, right now, if there's a response to what you've heard today. And not just from young folk, anybody. It's time to stand your ground. It's time to hold to what God brought you out of. I don't know about you, but I don't want to go back into the horrible pit, the muck and the mire. I want out. And the Father saw it from a distance. If that's you on this morning, I declare to you, God saw you coming, felt your heart changing, felt some things going on within you. When Pastor Chambers made that altar call at Antioch Tabernacle on 12th Street in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, when I looked around, Pastor Cobb, when I looked around, I, it seemed like I was the only person in the sanctuary along with her. It was like the invitation was tailor-made for me. And I knew after just getting married, I, I knew if, if, I, if we're going to stay married, I needed God to be in my life. Oh, bless his name. I'm wondering now. Maybe you have given your heart to, to the Lord. But you're struggling. You're struggling. I'm dealing with some stuff, Pastor. Sometimes I don't know what to do about it. Sometimes I, I lose my temper. Sometimes I say things I shouldn't say. I respond wrong. I, I get angry. I don't take time to, to, to the, let some things filter. I just, I just react. The altar is available. We'll pray with you this morning. Will you come?
Those that need prayer, come. For whatever reason you need to come for, you can come. You might come and stand for somebody else, but you can come. Did you hear the prayer of that young lady that prayed this morning? She didn't just learn how to pray this morning. It sounded to me like she's been talking to God before. Oh, God. oh bless his name. No, they may not, they may not, they may not do everything that we think they ought to be doing. But let's be honest, neither did we. Amen. They might frustrate you sometimes, but and we did too. You frustrated your parents, I frustrated mine. Your children frustrated you. It was called payback. Frustrated. But it didn't stop the move of God for your life. Stand your ground. Others that need to come at this time, feel free to come. Feel free to come. Elder Jones, would you prepare to pray today, if you will? Others that need to come, please sing it through, sing it through. You just stand. Tell me what do you do when you've given your all? Thank God for the word. Come on, thank God for the word that spoke to us today. Hallelujah. The call to all of us is to stand your ground. Amen. 